हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो वेलकम बैक टू अगेन दिस वीडियो सीरीज ऑन जीनोमिक्स लेबोरेटरी एंड क्लिनिकल इंटरप्रिटेशन सो बिफोर गोइंग टू द डिटेल्स ऑफ जीनोमिक लेट अस हैव डिस्कशन विथ सम मोर कॉन्सेप्ट व्हिच वी आर गोइंग टू यूज ड्यूरिंग दिस वीडियो सीरीज सो लेट अस स्टार्ट विथ द वेरिएंट्स वेरिएंट इज अ चेंज इन द न्यूक्लियोटाइड सीक्वेंस at a particular position in the genome compared to the genome assembly or genome build being used as a reference by the laboratory let us see what are these types of variations variations could be broadly classified into two types single nucleotide variations and structural variations a single nucleotide polymorphism or snp pronounced as snp is a single position difference in the dna sequence between individuals while larger insertions deletions inversions etc belong to the class of structural variants based on the functional consequences the variations are classified into several types what are these several types first we are going to see first of all is a salient or synonymous mutations these are the mutations that alter the dna base but have no effect on the sequence of amino acids on the protein these mutations are considered silent mutations as they do not affect the structure or functions of the protein because there is no change in the sequence of amino acids the next is missense or non synonymous mutation this type of mutation occurs due to alteration in one dna base pair that results in the substitution of one amino acid for another next is nonsense mutation within this type of mutation instead of substituting one amino acid for another the altered dna sequence leads to early termination of the protein because of incorporation of a stop codon this form of mutation results in a shortened protein that may or may not function properly the next is frame shift mutation this type of mutation occurs when the addition or deletion of dna base affects the reading frame of the gene the reading frame consists of groups of three bases called codon each codon coding for an amino acid the frame shift mutation switches the grouping of these bases and changes the amino acid code the resulting protein is typically non functional frame shift mutations can all be insertions deletions and duplications now we will see insertions or deletions insertion increases the amount of dna bases in a gene as few bases are inserted a deletion can remove a stretch of dna insertions or deletions can be small one or a few base pair within a gene usually less than 50 base pairs or even can be large where a complete gene few or more genes or even large section of the chromosomes are deleted in any of these cases the protein formed by the gene will not function properly now we will see duplication duplication consists of a fragment of the dna that has been repeated abnormally one or more times this type of mutation may change the function of the resulting protein the next is alternative splicing alternative splicing is a process that allows the messenger rna that is mrna to guide synthesis of different protein forms that is isoforms of a gene that may have distinct cellular functions or characteristics it leads to the variable rearrangement of the intron and exon components that are joined together by splicing to modify the mrna coding sequence alternative splicing process during gene expression that allows a single gene to code for multiple proteins that means a single gene can code for different proteins 
or various proteins. In this process, particular exons of a gene may be included within or excluded from the final processed mRNA. This means the exons are joined in a different combination. Uh, that means these genes or these exons will be combined in a different combination leading to a different mRNA. Consequently, the proteins translated from alternatively splice mRNA will contain differences in their amino acid sequences. So, alternatively splicing allows the human genome to direct the synthesis of many proteins than would be expected from its 20,000 protein coding genes. Because of this alternative splicing, more proteins will be synthesized or will be formed from this protein coding genes. There are numerous modes of alternative splicing observed of which is most common is exon skipping in which a particular exon will be skipped during the splicing process and the final uh, mRNA which will be formed will be a different product. This was about the type of variations what we have seen till now in this series. Now we will see some more terms which will be very helpful for us to understand the mode of inheritance. So what are these different concepts? These are we are going to see are modes of inheritance. Mode of inheritance are classified into four types autosomal dominant inheritance, autosomal recessive inheritance, X-linked dominant inheritance and X-linked in recessive inheritance. So what is autosomal? So first what is autosomal dominant inheritance? Here the dominant allele is a defective whereas the recessive allele is normal. The individual affected by autosomal dominant diseases can carry dominant allele in either homozygous or heterozygous condition whereas unaffected individuals carry recessive allele in homozygous condition only. The features here in autosomal dominant are the trait does not skip any generation. So the allele will be expressed in all the generations. Equal chances of both male and female child to get affected. So here it doesn't have any sex differentiation while the expression of genes or while the expression of characteristics and it is transmitted by either sex. So both male and female can transmit the character. The next is autosomal recessive inheritance. In this case recessive allele is a defective whereas the dominant allele is normal. The individual affected by the autosomal recessive diseases carry recessive allele in homozygous conditions whereas the unaffected individuals carry dominant allele in either homozygous or heterozygous conditions. The features are the autosomal recessive character will skip the generations. There is equal chance for both and female child to get affected. It is also transmitted by either sex. Most affected individuals have unaffected parents as it is a it is expressed only in the homozygous forms. So there may be a chances that uh, affected children will have unaffected parents. If both the parents are affected, the children should be affected as genotype of the parents would be homozygous. The next is X-linked dominant inheritance. In human beings, males have X and Y chromosome, whereas females have only X chromosome. So an unaffected male will carry the defective allele in homozygous conditions and affected female will carry the defective allele either in the heterozygous or homozygous conditions. The characteristics are the X-linked dominant inheritance will not skip any generation. It affects males always from the affected females. Affected females always come from affected mothers or fathers. There are 50% of child of an affected heterozygous mothers to get affected. All the daughters and none of the sons of the affected fathers are affected. Now the final one is X-linked recessive inheritance. Here a female will become affected if she carries two defective allele on X chromosome that is she is homozygous. A male will become affected even if he carries one defective allele on X chromosome 
as there is no counterpart of an allele on Y chromosome. The features are most affected individuals are male. Affected son always come from affected or carrier mothers. Affected daughters come from affected fathers and carrier or affected mothers. Sons of affected female should be affected. There are 50% chances for each son of a carrier female to be affected. So this is how we have seen in brief about the modes of inheritance. So we will conclude this lecture with this some important concept and from the next lecture we will start our main uh, aim of the series regarding the interpretation. So thank you and keep following.